Good morning, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a very lovely morning. We are going to talk about something that is very interesting that is called human resource management. And human resource management, for your information, why is it so important? Because every day when you come, for example, that an employee will hire in an organization and what is the next thing that they should do, right? The first one, maybe after so-called interview session, they're going to have, for example, like an orientation and after that, they're going to have training and at the end of the month, they're going to have their pay. So it's called compensations and benefit. And in this human resource management also, we're going to talk about something that's called employee relation, which got to do with trade unions, for example, and also collective bargaining. In this chapter, or the first chapter of human resource management, that is the one, the outline for this particular chapter is the first one. We're going to explain what is HRM and how it relates to the management process. The second one, we're going to discuss how the managers can use human resource concepts. The third one, we have to compare the HR responsibilities of line and staff managers. And the fourth one, we are going to explain the changing role of human resource managers. The fifth one, we are going to discuss the changing environment of human resource management. Then we are going to discuss also human resource as a profession. And also, we are, lastly, we are going to explain how human resource practices are influenced by cultural and religious values. Interestingly, human resource management is related also to the principles of management in certain ways. All right? The management process, normally, as you know, we have a five basic functions that is planning, organizing, staffing, leading and controlling. All right? We are going to talk about it later. We are going to talk about how planning, how organizing, how staffing and leading and controlling that is going to be useful and relates to human resource management. The first one, we are going to talk about planning. Okay. Uh, first of all, if you are a manager, I'm sure that when you come to an organization, you've got to plan your work. You've got to plan, for example, you have a short-term plan, you have a middle, uh, so-called mid-term plan, and you're also going to have a long-range plan. The first one you've got to do, you have to set your goals and standards, and you have to develop rules and procedures. The next one, after you have planned, you've got to organize things, or it's called the second process of management, it's called organizing. The first one is you give each subordinate a specific task for them to do and you have to also set up a channels of communication coordinate of your work activities for your staff and the next uh, of the functions of the management is called leading all right we need a leader we need a manager right in order to actually how to guide this particular so-called a group of subordinates so we have to have a leader to lead a manager to lead or to get a subordinate to do the task and the maintain of the moral and also motivate the subordinates the next one that we is very important in this management functions is called controlling after the manager has planned the manager have organized the manager have lead of course the manager have to control the outcomes so how the manager control the outcomes the first one is that the manager have to set the standards and also make sure that they compare the performance and also taking a correct corrective action for that and the final one i think we cannot do as a leader we cannot plan we cannot organize we cannot lead we cannot control we have to have a staff all right definitely human resource management or hr will come into picture where we have staffs you know we have to recruit them we have to select them we have to train them as a staff and we have to evaluate their performance at the end of the day and of course we have to also give some money or some benefits or we call it rewarding the staff I think that's all uh, the, the so-called the management process that's related to human resource management that is planning, organizing, leading and controlling and of course stuffing will take place for the human resource management. Okay, human resource management or HRM, normally what they do as a manager or in an organization they will call the have and so-called a department called human resource management and human resource management department normally what do they do yeah they do they are the one who carrying out the policies and the practices of human resource management by managing their people the department people or the organization people okay it is involved recruiting training appraising and rewarding the HR or also the subordinate of the organization 
Do you know how human resource managers actually do their job? I think, let me explain it to you. The first one, they conduct the job analysis. And what is job analysis? We are going to talk about it in our next chapter, which is, I think, is very, very important for an organization to have their job analysis. The first step, actually, is to conduct a job analysis of a staff. And the second one is to actually do the HR planning. Oh, you got to know, for example, as a HR manager, how many staff is actually the total staff of the organization and who's leaving, who is actually going to retire, and do we need to actually take the new staff to come in. That is called human resource planning. The next particular step that we actually have to do as a HR manager is selections of a candidate meaning to say that for example we have about 1,000 people who actually apply for a job as an engineer out of 1,000 people definitely we wouldn't take 1,000 right we're going to take like maybe around 20 people only so the process of selecting a candidate a pool of candidate is called selection the next one is called orientations and training of our new employees of course, I think you know when a new staff come in to the organization, what they have to do is that they have to go for the employee orientation. Why is that? Because of, for example, they have to mingle around, they have to know, for example, the culture and value of the organization, and also, actually, the managers also now have to train the new employees for them to know the skills and also the basic skills, the soft and also the hard skills of their job. And also, I think the one that is very important and the subordinates and the staff and we as individuals are looking forward is that at the end of the month, we're going to get our salaries, we're going to get our wages and salaries. So one of the aspects of the manager's job is to manage the wages and salaries of their employees. And the next one is also besides the getting all the rewards every month, we're going to have an incentive as well, right? We're going to have, for example, like say that we're going to send our children, for example, to a nursery. That is also called a benefit and incentive. And at the end of it, we're going to have bonus if we perform very well. That is called incentive and benefit. The next one, I think that is very important as well, that you don't want to go to work for nothing, right? So they have to call Another one that is the aspects of a manager job is called appraising or performance appraisal. And the next one, of course, when we do the performance appraisal, we do the training, we do the orientation, definitely we have to do communication that is called the interviewing process, the counseling process, and also the disciplining process. And the final one, I think, that is very important is as a manager to motivate you know, the HR practitioners and also the employees of the organization by building a commitment and a strong commitment actually towards the organization at the end of it, definitely going to make sure that that particular so-called subordinates perform the, in the right way. And do you know, audience, ladies and gentlemen, if we actually as a HR manager, we, re we do also sometimes a personal mistakes, you know. What is the personal mistake normally as a HR manager do? The first one is to hire the wrong person for the job. Can you imagine if you hire the wrong person for the job? For example, that you need a person as a customer service and when you interview the person, the, the, the customer service are supposed to be what? To be friendly, right? To be patient, but you hire the wrong person to come in. So it's going to ruin your company reputation. So this is the first mistake actually the company or the HR manager do by hiring the wrong person for the wrong job. Yeah? The second one is a company when they are hired the wrong person they come all the an employee having difficulties for example in doing their job and they feel that the moral is down they just resign and the company will experience a high turnover that is another mistake done by the HR manager and also there's another one that is called when people are not doing at their best why is that because of there's an issue of motivation they don't feel that they are being motivated to do their job they just don't like to do the job and the HR manager does not know about this and although they know about this but they are not doing nothing about it. Another one is that they are wasting their time with useless interviews. What does it mean? It means that, for example, you want to hire, for example, a five people for your 
uh, factory operators, but you have been actually tried to interview more than that. But out of so many candidates, you didn't, didn't get any, any candidate out of it. So that is called a waste time of your useless interview. The final one is that you have your company sued by discriminatory action, meaning to say that when, for example, that you are doing something wrong for your subordinates or for your employees, meaning to say that this particular so-called action is not right and you have difficulties in terms of law. People who sue you for you are not treating well your particular so-called employees. And do you know also your company also can make a mistakes for these unsafe practices, for example. You know, for example, if for example that your environment is not safe enough for the particular employee and the employer think that it's causing a lot of hazards to them, they can report this to the labor department and the labor department can come and look at the organization and find out, oh, you are doing something that is unsafe. So you can be fined for actually utilizing that unsafe practices. And also there is another mistake that has been done by the organization that is that some employees think their salaries are unfair and equitable relative to others in the organization. This is so, so another mistake. And the, the third one or the fifth one actually to allow a low, a lack of training to undermine your department's effectiveness. Meaning to say that meaning to say there is a training is being conducted in your organization but it is not effective for the employees. And the final one is that the employee is actually not committing themselves and make the mistakes and also you as an organization, you have commit to unfair employment practices. As a HR manager, do you know that what is the most important thing for the HR manager? I think all HR manager out there is actually to get the best result from the employees. So the bottom line, in order to get a good result is to manage your employees. And as HR concepts or HR human resource management, we want to create value by engaging in activities that produce the employee behaviors the company needs to achieve its strategic goal. So what we're going to do, we have to make sure that all our staff is aligned to one goal in order to actually complete the goal and also to achieve the company mission and visions. That is actually the values of HR bring in an organization. In HR or human resource department, there is called things called authority, where actually they have a power or the right to make decisions and they have the right to direct others to work and also give orders. And do you know that there is a two types of authority? The first one is the staff authority, it is called adversary role, and the second one is called line authority, that is the superior subordinate role. What is the difference? Okay, the first one, staff authority, normally give rights to the HR manager to advise other managers to employees. And the second one, the line authority, is actually the authority of managers to direct people in his or her own department. I will give the example later. A manager normally have two functions. The first one, remember I say, is a line manager who is having a line authority. The second one is called staff manager, which is have the staff authority. And as a line manager, for example, a manager who is authorized to direct the work of subordinates and is responsible for accomplishing the organization task. And the staff manager role is a manager who assists and advises line manager. I'll give you an example. For example, if you are in an organization and you are a production manager, so you are playing a role as a line manager if you manage for 50 uh, staff of and operators under you you are actually behaving or authorizing your so-called line authority. But as a HR manager, you can advise, for example, that production manager, when you're doing your role as an advisor to this production manager, you are utilizing your staff authority as a human resource manager. So that's why the line manager normally communicate directly to these so-called and operators or the staff under them but the staff manager or the staff authority will definitely come in and only advise them to do things that's got to do with human resource management. That is the difference between line manager and staff manager. And do you know, as line managers of human resource management, they have 10 responsibilities 
I'm going to share with you all the 10 responsibilities. The first one is to place the right person on the right job. Remember, the mistake, the first mistake the line manager do is that they hire the wrong person to the wrong job. You know, meaning to say they're not actually matching the right person with the right job. For example, if you are taking people as a marketing people or a sales employees, that person should have a skills, a skill skill or a marketing skills for them to do the right job with the right way. But if you hire a person who are very silent, they are very quiet, so that means that you are placing the wrong person with the wrong job. Alright, so number one responsibility is to place the person on the right job. The second one, when you already get an employee in an organization, you have to conduct an orientation for the new employees. The third one, after you have doing the orientation, you have to train the employees for jobs new to them because they do not know nothing about that particular job. So you have to make sure there is a training of a hard skills, the one, their job responsibility, and the soft skill. If you hire them as a manager, they need to know how to manage and motivate their employees. That is called the soft skill. The fourth one is that you have to make sure also when they are doing their job, they have to improve the job performance for themselves and also for their subordinates. So you have to make sure that there is also something for them to achieve at the end of the year. There is a key performance in that, for example, for them to achieve and you know at the end of it, you will know how to evaluate this particular so-called staff. The fifth one is the line manager's responsibility actually to gain to gain the creative cooperation and developing smooth working relationship. Of course, who wants to work in a relationship that is so bad in their the relationship with the employees? So the line managers of HRM, for example, the marketing manager have to make sure that the marketers under them is happy and is productive for the organization. How do a manager actually motivate or make sure that the all the employees is performing the first one i think the main role of a manager especially the line manager they have to interpret the company policies and processes right they have to share what is the vision what is the mission of the organization to the employees so that the employees can carry out their tasks to complete and perform the next one besides that definitely we talk about costing and costing when we talk about costing is got to do with controlling costs that is, I think, all organization is looking at profit and dollars and cents. So I think controlling costs is very, very important to the line manager. The eight, number eight is to develop the abilities of each person. Everyone is special. And I think you have heard the word of diversity. Diversity means different people with different kind of characteristics and behaviors. So everyone is special in their own way. So you have to know, for example, if that person have the ability as a customer service, you have to put that person in a customer service role. If that person is good at accounting, you have to put that person in an accounting background. That is what we call developing the abilities of each individual in the organization. The next one, last but not least, it's got to do with maintain the morale of the employee and also you as a line manager have to protect the employee health and physical condition of that particular so-called individual. Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, HR managers also have three functions to do actually. The first one is called line function, the second one is called staff function, and the third one is called coordination function. Okay, the HR managers direct when the HR manager do a line function the HR managers will direct the activities of the people in his or her own department and in related service areas like the plan cafeteria I will give you an example okay the line manager if you're the HR manager of your HR department you definitely will have to direct the activities of your own people okay for example if you have 20 people under you you have to make sure that you do the planning the leading the controlling and the organizing of your staff in your own organization and besides the line function you got to do as HR manager also your functional or coordination function why is that what is the coordination function the coordination function is actually about you to coordinate your activities with other people activities you as HR manager you have to coordinate your own department's activity in HR for example for you have health and safety protection practices you have to relate also the health and safety practices 
through other departments, for example, production department, for example, marketing and sales department, for example, finance department. The coordination function is very, very vital and very important to you as a HR manager. Besides the line function and the coordination function, there is another function that is also very important that is called staff function. Staff function means that you have to assist as a HR manager and advising the line managers is the heart of the HR manager's job. Because you know why? As a HR manager, you got to give your advice to the line managers of other departments. For example, that you have a marketing, productions, accounting department, finance department under your organization, you as HR manager have to consult them, have to manage them, have to tell advice to them what to do if all these managers is facing problem with their staff. That is actually the three functions of the HR manager. The first one is called line function that I described just now. The second one is called coordination function and the third one is called staff function. So easy, right, as HR manager? The HR department normally have two sides. The first one is a small company and the second one is large company. And normally in a small company, only a few personnel. And the large company, of course, is very huge. Normally it's multinational corporation where they have a full range of HR specialists for each different function. For example, for the HR department, as you can see, they only have the manager of human resource and they have also the coordinator of HR and they have officer generalist. Normally, the generalist is the person who actually do everything in an organization. The first one, maybe the officer do the HR function and also do the administrative work. So it's a combination of both. So meaning to say the person who work in a HR organization that is very small, they have to do everything. They have to do all rounder as a, an officer and also a HR practitioner. That is the size of HR and also a HR department in a small company, very limited function. The difference is that when a HR department actually plays in multinational corporation, for example, or in a very, very big organization, huge organization, the size of HR department also become bigger. They have actually the specialists all over this multinational corporation or in their HR department. They have a department, for example, if you can see on the slide, they have department like total compensations and benefit. They have also about system support. They have employment center. They have also organization development department and also they have got to do with also this administrative support so the all this function actually only happen in the big organization and they are called human resource specialists rather than generalists the, the specialist it means that the people is focused on one particular job if that person is a recruiting officer or equipment recruitment specialist meaning to say this person is doing only the hiring and also selection of an employee that what is the difference between the HR generalist and HR specialist specialist and in an organization who are a small size they only have the generalist but in the big size they have this called specialist so that is the very difference between so-called the small HR department and also the big HR department remember I said about HR specialist HR specialist is the one who are very focused about one particular task or responsibilities only. All right, we have a few specialists here. We want to know what is the duties of the HR specialist. I will share with you. The first one is called training specialist. Training specialist plan, organize, and direct training, and they're also actually responsible to advise managers on training. The second one is called job analysis or job analysts, they are the one who actually collect information about the job, specific job especially, and they have to prepare the job description for the organization. That's why they call job analysts. In an organization, for example, they also have a recruitment specialist and they call the recruiter of an organization. They're very important. They collect the information about the job, they interview and recommend the suitable candidates for the organizations by placing the right people with the right job. They are called the recruiter of the organization and they are one of the HR specialists. Another specialist that is very, very important to an organization is called compensation manager or the one who are specialized in compensation. They 
the responsibility of the manager is to develop a compensation plans that is also very crucial and the second one to handle the employee benefits program they have to know the plans for long term for short term and for the medium term and they have to make sure that the benefits is appropriate for the employees the second one or maybe the third or the fourth one is the employment relations specialist they are the one who advise the managers on the employee relation issues example issue of er is got to do with the trade union for example it's got to do with collective bargaining for example that they are the one that who have to handle this er issues and they have to make sure that their presence themselves in the collective bargaining process they have to negotiate with unions they are the one who call employment relation specialists in order to understand the human resource management function between the line and staff HR management, there are actually two different tasks that's been carrying out by the line managers and also the staff of human resource. The first one, actually, the line managers and HR managers have to do two different tasks. The two different tasks, I will give you an example. For example, the line and staff that involved in recruiting, the line managers normally will describe the qualifications and skills to the employees, what they need from the HR department. The HR people then will take over it. They will interview, shortlist applicants and administer the appropriate tasks. Then they refer the best applicants to the line managers. The line managers then will interview and select those applicants whom they want. And give you another example, in training, the line managers describe what they expect the trainers to be able to do so and the HR team designs the best training program and helps the line managers to administer the training. A HR manager, they have to also have to manage the changing in the environment. For example, the HR manager must be able to respond to changes that are happening every day in their life and the major issues that or the changes or the trends that happen around them is the globalization issue, the technological advances issue, changes in nature of work and the changes in workforce demographic. I will explain to you in detail later. Normally, when we talk about globalization, it's got to do with tendencies of the companies to extend their sales, ownership or productions to other countries. And when there is a globalization happening, definitely there is going to be a more competition and it is going to be a more pressure to be world class and make sure that the organization have to lower their costs and to increase the productivity of employees. For example, in this case, Toyota produced cars in China, in Thailand and many other countries. So, as a Toyota organization, they have to make sure that they hired all the people around the world in a Chinese in China or the people from a Thai people in Thailand. So in order to manage the Chinese people from China and the Thai people from Thailand or a Malaysian people from Malaysia, they have to make sure that they have streamlined or they have a standard policies and practices of human resource because that is actually the issue the human resource manager have to face when it's got to do with the globalization issue. And globalization takes place in every day of our life. It happened not only in Malaysia, it's also happened everywhere in a part of the world. And I think globalization issue have to manage in a very proper way by the HR manager especially. Especially for example, if you are a big and a large organization like the multinational corporation, then the multinational corporation HR team have to work hard in order to manage the diversity of the workforce of the MNCs. Because in MNCs, for example, if you're working in Motorola, you have people coming from US, United States of America, you have people coming from the UK, you have people from the Asian region. So this is the three different sets of people who have a different sets of background and culture. And the HR people have to manage the diversity effectively and efficiently. And 
The HR manager also have to manage these technological advances. As you know, we are using internet, we are using a lot of ICT, information communication technology, in order to increase the competitiveness in our business. And in order for you to manage it, we will definitely help the result to enable the businesses or the organization to outsource their non-core activities to other countries where costs are lower. This is a challenge that definitely will cause changes in the nature of work in an organization because technology plays an important role. For example, that if a staff is someone that is good in internet or technology savvy, then you have to make sure there is a training for the people to advance themselves in that technology or ICT. I think the next challenge is that the first one, I think we talk about this now globalization issue, and the second one, we talk about IT. I think the third one, when IT is there, we definitely have to make sure that we hire the right person to do this particular job. Because this person has to be a flexible worker and not only assigned to one task, but they have to do many tasks at the same time. The other one have to do multitasking. What is the meaning of multitasking? I think you guys know about that. Multitasking is that you are doing lots of job at one particular time. You are not only, for example, if you are a clerk in an organization, you have to do not only typing, you got to also make coffee for your boss and you also make sure that you have to do all the faxes and photocopy. So I think multitasking is not a new thing now. This is a challenge actually for the HR department to hire a people who can do this multitasked task. Another challenge that is going to take place is when there is a changes in workforce demographics. For example, if you are a big organization or if you are a multinational corporation, you have to hire people with a variety and diverse background. This is called a diversified workforce where you have actually employed a staff that is having a differences in terms of race, religion, nationality, gender, age and culture. Don't you think that sometimes when you hire, for example, a youngster compared to the people who are old, you have to manage it differently. And of course, culture takes place as well. For example, if you have people from Latin America, you have people from Europe, and you have people from Asian countries. An example, you have people from Bangladesh, China, India, Indonesia, Pakistan, Thailand. You have people from Chile, and you have people, for example, from Finland. I think, yeah, the HR department plays an important role to make sure that they come up with a new sets of values and belief and make sure that everything goes on well because a different or the diversities of culture will make them to work together. They have to work together in order to be productive and efficient. So as a HR department, as a HR manager, this is a challenge to you guys to actually manage this group of people who have a diversity in their background. Ladies and gentlemen, because of these changes of the environment, for example, like globalization issues just now, and also technology, then the changes in this environment make sure that HR managers have to take a new responsibilities. HR functions now have to change from the functional as a HR day-to-day -day activities to a more strategic functions. I will describe to you a strategic function later. In order for you as a HR manager to deal with these changes, I already said to you that just now that you have to link, for example, from a functional activities, functional role as a HR to a more strategic. So let's talk about strategic planning. Strategic planning normally involves in an organization, especially in the big organization. What is strategic planning? Strategic planning is the company's long-term plan for how it will balance its internal strengths and weaknesses with its external opportunities and threat to maintain a competitive advantage. It means that a company have to know their strength, they have to know their weaknesses, and they have to grab the opportunities out there in order to survive. Don't you think so? A company must survive in order to get a profit, right, at the end of the year? So the three questions or three basic questions in the strategic planning is the first one, you got to know your current business position. The second one, your future business position expected to be and the third one is how to get to expected future business position but so these three strategic planning questions is vital and important 
for an organization. When we talk about strategic planning just now, we have to relate with strategic human resource management because this particular subject is about human resource management. And what is strategic human resource management? Strategic human resource management is formulating the HR policies and introducing practices that produce staff competencies and behaviors that the company needs to achieve its strategic goal. It means that as a HR department in an organization, they have to formulate the right HR policies that also in line with the mission and vision of the organization for the long-term survival. As a HR manager today, they are involved in partnering with their top managers in both designing and implementing their company strategies. What they do actually, they have to understand, for example, what the top managers is doing, what their general managers is doing, what their CEO visions and the directions of the organizations, and they have to involve in the strategizing their human resource policies and procedures in line with what the company want. The top managers normally want to see precisely how the HR manager's plan will make the company more valuable. So that is the role of the HR manager in an organization to synchronize, for example, their HR plan with the organization, mission, and the top manager's wants and needs. Besides the strategic planning and besides a HR as a strategist, do you know that the HR managers also have to actually play a role as and outsourcing people. They have to make sure that also there is an outsourcing of the HR activities. For example, that in a payrolls, in a benefit, the wellness programs and the employee training. I will give you an example for an organization who have actually actually outsourced their recruitment services. For example, if they need an engineer, they will just go to a, a company, an outsourced company, say it is a company, for a company to actually do the interview, the selection process, and to the screening process of the candidates. And after the A company have done that, they will definitely pass it back to the HR organization or this organization. They are the one who are going to finalize who are the candidate they are going to hire. This particular outsourcing activities not only happen in UK or USA, but also happen in Malaysia. So we come back to the end of our sessions. Okay, I'm just going to summarize what we have learned today. The first one we have learned is about the human resource management, the definitions, the activities of human resource management. Remember, we talked about recruitment a little bit, the training, the orientation, the performance appraisals, and also reward. And we also talk about the HR function as a line managers and also a staff fun function. The third one that we have talked just now is the challenge of human resource manager. If they are actually want the company to perform, they have to make sure and keep up with the changes of the organization. That is the first one is the globalization issues. The second one is the technological advances. And the third one is diversity of workplace. So I think this is very, very crucial, very, very important for an organization to manage their staff effectively and efficiently. And one of the example of this so-called effective system is called High Performance Work System, HPWS. The HPWS is actually an integrated set of uh, HRM policies and practices that together produce superior staff performance. They are the one the system actually need to focus on performance only and they are actually pushing the staff to achieve the goal of the organization. That is actually so-called the current trend in human resource management. I will see you in the next sessions. Bye for now. Thank you for being with us.